This video is brought to you by BetterHelp. More on them later. A survey by Deloitte in 2020 found that 77% of respondents have experienced burnout at their current job, with more than half of them citing more than one occurrence. Burnout is something many of us face, especially when we're juggling multiple responsibilities. It's not always easy to navigate, but I'm currently working my way through getting back on track to doing what I love. In this video, I'm sharing the three-step approach that I'm using to recover from burnout and re-engage with the creative work that I love. It's a method grounded in recognizing the problem, taking the time to reset, and slowly rebuilding with intention. If you're feeling drained and struggling to find your way back, these steps just might work for you too. So let's get started. How's it going folks? My name is Marcus. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here on this channel, I like to talk about technology, EDC, and anything that can help me live a happier, balanced, more productive life. And today we're definitely in that balanced, productive life. So I like to talk about productivity a lot. I've got a lot of work on my plate. Just to give for some folks who are new here who have not seen any of my other videos, I've got quite a serious job working in software development here in Silicon Valley. I'm a VP of product at a large tech company. I, in my personal life, I've got two young kids, two girls, um, who are you know under the ages of 10 for both of them. And that's really important to me that I'm present and active in their lives. I also have this YouTube channel, which is my hobby. It's something that I really get a creative outlet in and something I really enjoy doing. But generally, I pride myself on being productive, on being able to get things done. And that's why the burnout I've experienced over the last couple of months has been even harder for me to accept. And I'm going to go through the steps today that I do to get out of this burnout. Now, when I talk about burnout, I actually didn't experience burnout in my day job or in all aspects of my life. It was specifically around YouTube. When I was researching this video, I found a study conducted by Creator Economy Research Lab in 2022, and they found that over 65% of content creators reported experiencing burnout, often citing the constant pressure to produce content as one of the key factors that they need to do it. I think it's tricky because you need to have an interesting topic each week. You have an unrelenting upload schedule. If you want to beat the algorithm, they say you got to post every week at the same time. You've got people that rely on you. I've got people like Connor here who I'm lucky enough will edit my videos every week. But if I don't create a video every week, he's going to look for work from someone who can be more reliable because he needs to earn a living as well. And then you've got the brands aspect. As you grow your channel, you get more opportunity to work with brands and they want to sponsor more of your content. But also some brands are very demanding in what they expect in terms of having content on certain days to be able to review it in advance, all of those things, things I'm not interested in. I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. As someone who's experienced burnout and anxiety, I know how important mental health is. And sometimes we need a little extra support. That's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform that makes getting professional help more accessible. You can talk to a licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home through video, phone, or even text messaging. What I love about it is that it's so convenient. No need to commute, but you can do it in your own schedule and to your own time. Personally, I believe in the power of seeking help when things get overwhelming. Taking care of your mental health is just as important as your own physical health, and BetterHelp offers a great way to get that support. Whether you're dealing with stress, anxiety, or just need someone to talk to, they've got you covered. If you're interested in checking it out, go to betterhelp.com forward slash Marcus O'Brien for 10% off your month of therapy. That's betterhelp.com forward slash Marcus O'Brien. You'll be supporting your own mental health and you'll also help this channel. Right, back to the content. So what was crazy for me was I have a busy day job and I have a demanding home life. And YouTube was actually my hobby and the thing that was supposed to give me energy. But it turned out that the thing that I was using to recharge was actually depleting me. Which brings me on to step one of the process. One, recognizing burnout. So what does burnout feel like and how can we recognize it as soon as possible? I think there's probably uniformly about three key things that people feel generally when they feel burned out. Number one is exhaustion, and this goes beyond just feeling tired. It's a deep physical, emotional, and sometimes mental fatigue that doesn't go away when you rest. You can sleep as much as you want. You still feel drained, overwhelmed, and unable to cope with daily tasks. I think if you hit the, the stage where you're unable to cope with daily tasks, you've definitely gone too far. And one of the key things here with burnout is recognizing it as soon as possible so you can get back on track as soon as possible. The second thing that you might notice in yourself is reduced performance or productivity. You know, sometimes it leads to decline in the quality or the quantity of work that you're usually able to do. Tasks that used to be easy now feel difficult. And you might find yourself procrastinating or making more mistakes than usual. And the last one is detachment and cynicism. So people experiencing burnout often become increasingly negative or detached or cynical about the work that they're doing. They might struggle to connect with the why. And certainly that's something that happened for me. 
I'm a big fan of setting goals for myself. And when I set goals, like I have goals for this channel and how I want it to grow and things like that, I often set the why behind them. So why is it important that I want to grow this channel? Why is it important that I grow revenue? Things like that. So when I feel burnt out, and one of the key things that when I was checking with myself and I burned out, was I found it hard to connect with why I'm actually doing it, why I'm actually creating this content. So for me, that was part of the detachment and, and cynicism. Now I want to emphasize that burnout's not a sign of weakness. Acknowledging that you feel burned out or tired, given the fact that 77% of people feel burnout, you saw from that Deloitte um, uh, quote that I said at the start, it's definitely something everybody experiences at some stage. We shouldn't pretend that we're not feeling burned out. So I think recognizing one, am I burned out? and then acknowledging it and admitting it and not feeling embarrassed about that. It's not a sign of weakness. It is typically for people who do a lot are very productive and sometimes they just tipped it a little bit too far over the edge where they went over the productivity curve and now they're feeling that burnout. So the second step to recovering from burnout is to taking time to recover. So focus on what needs to be done. I'm not saying that you should do absolutely nothing. In a time of burnout, you're still going to need to function as a human being. You're still going to need to keep going with your job. You're still going to need to take care of your kids. But really look at all the things that you're doing and all the areas that you're spending your energy and really whittle it down to the most essential things for you, the things that have to be done. You have to continue to be employed. You have to continue to be a dad or, or a parent or whatever the responsibilities that you have. Those things need to happen. So for me, you might have noticed if you're a regular viewer that I haven't created content I haven't been shipping videos for the past six weeks and that was because I took that time for me to be able to recharge. I did find this YouTube channel was becoming increasingly demanding and this was an area where I could uh, not focus on and not, not emphasize during that time while I did emphasize being very busy at work and taking care of my kids. We also bought a house in Ireland, so kind of renovating that house and working on that during that time was something I was able to focus on while I was feeling this burnout. Now, for me, not working for six weeks on YouTube created problems. Connor, who creates these videos, had six weeks of not working with me. In terms of brand advertising, I said no to you know ten, tens of thousands of dollars, honestly, in terms of uh, potential revenue that I could have had with brands that I really want to work with. So I say no to brand deals all the time, but there's lots of brands that I really like working with, and you've seen them on this channel before, but I've had to say no to that advertising or let some of those brands down where I had signed up to do some uh, sponsored videos, but I wasn't able to make them. And then the third one is slowed growth for the channel, and th I have seen this significantly. I've seen fewer subscribers, almost half of what I typically get. I've seen reduced views and I think this channel will grow more slowly as a response as a result of this and I have to be okay with that and, and I am okay with that. That's part of being able to recover. So for me the second part of taking time to recover was really focusing on taking care of myself and I mean I don't mean going easy on myself. So sometimes people think taking time to recover is doing nothing lying on a couch and watching a lot of videos. For me it's actually forcing myself to do the opposite. I'd fallen out of sync with doing like I like to do cold plunges in the morning. For me getting up and getting into cold water I, I kind of created my old cold plunge in the back garden there. So doing that every single morning and forcing myself to overcome my inner demons every morning and getting in there was a big part for me. I also really doubled down on my weightlifting. I kind of did a, uh, somewhat of a dirty bulk, which means I, I ate a lot of protein, but I ate a lot of, I ate a lot of everything during that time. But I also lifted more than I've been lifting before. So able to really focus on, on, on weightlifting and kind of my own personal health. And then finally just being actually yeah giving myself time to have downtime lie in the hammock i'm not very good at doing nothing i think that's probably my biggest weakness if i have time i'm always trying to figure out what should i spend it on and force myself to do things and during the six week window i did a lot of nothing which was really really beneficial to me and finally i indulged in another creative outlet so because i felt burned out in my creative outlet, it wasn't in work, it wasn't in family, I did think it was worthwhile pursuing another creative one. And for me, this is working on these Warhammer 40K. Uh, it's a tabletop gaming game from the 1980s. I used to play it in the 90s for anyone who plays it edition second edition was the last time I played but I re-engaged the community here in Berkeley and and I'm actually lining up to play my first 10th edition game it's a super niche nerdy genre of gaming but painting these little war figures minor space wolves uh, and doing tabletop gaming is another creative outlet another way for me to uh, be rejuvenated and something I could throw myself into while I had the time over the last six weeks I will not create content on these because it's I want that to 
maybe a release valve for me in future where I don't feel like I have to create little videos about doing this as a hobby. I'll show some on screen for this video, but I want that to be just my thing, kind of something secret, something that's healthy and something that lets me be creative when I don't want to create YouTube content. Which brings me on to the third phase and possibly the hardest of all of them. So you've recognized you're burned out. You've taken the time to do the things that are important to you to recover, taking time, doing less, but focusing on your health and well-being. But the third thing is the importance of re-engaging and doing that with a real, in a mindful way. And for this, I used Cal Newport's book on slow productivity. I kept that in mind. So Cal Newport, if you don't know, created this new book. I'm a huge fan of Cal Newport and I've read almost everything he has on productivity. And he's created this new book on slow productivity. And Three key things that kind of stood out to me in this book are how he talks about doing less better, so doing fewer things and doing them better, avoiding the pitfalls of multitasking, and three is being more mindful about what you commit to. And those were the key three things that I took with me as I was trying to redesign how I re-engage in being able to get back to where I was. So just to be clear, I want to continue to be productive. I want to have a really busy, demanding day job and demanding life with my kids and, and being there for them. And I also want to be able to create and grow this channel. But I want to be able to do it by doing less and doing it better. I'm going to talk a bit about that. I'm going to be avoiding the pitfalls of multitasking and I'm going to be mindful about what I commit to. So A, limit your work in progress. So Newport emphasized the importance of reducing the number of tasks you're juggling at any given time. This aligns with avoiding multitasking, allowing you to focus steeply on fewer things, which can help prevent the feeling of being overwhelmed or burned out. So for me, it's saying no to sponsors that I really want to work with sometimes and really focusing on just those sponsors who are willing to work with me on these short term projects. So B is embrace the craftsman mindship. Cal Newport suggests that you should focus on quality over quantity. By putting more care and attention into fewer tasks, you can provide better results without spreading yourself too thin. This idea is particularly relevant when discussing how to re-engage with your work after burnout. So not planning out video schedules more than like two weeks in advance, being okay with missing an upload. These are all things that I really struggled with before, but as I re-approach YouTube, this is going to be my mindset going forward to make this more sustainable and hopefully avoid burnout in future. And then C, pace yourself. So Newport advocates for working at a sustainable pace rather than constantly pushing yourself to the limit. This is definitely something that I've struggled with in the past. This ties into the idea of giving yourself time to recover and then maintaining a manageable workload to avoid future burnout. So for me, not every video needs to be a banger. Not every video needs to be the best video I've ever made. And do it for the love of doing the video. Consistency beats divine. So I have to continue to remember that just creating a video every week. If I miss it, that's okay. I should, that's my goal to create it every week. And that if it's not a banger every week, that's okay as well. This is part of my creative outlet. And sometimes people will love videos and some people, times people won't, and that's okay as well. So with these new guidelines in place, I feel happy to re-engage with YouTube and create more content. And you're going to see more content from me in the next couple of weeks. I have a lot of ideas of things I want to work on, but I'm pacing myself to make sure that I don't get overwhelmed. And I'm going to be working with a small number of sponsors during that time to make it more manageable. So what are some of the experiences that you've had with burnout? Turns out most people have had it. What are the things that you know you need to do in order to keep you sane or to get you back on track? What's the system and process that you use? And what's your Warhammer 40k? What's the, your go-to creative outlet? That's your thing, your private thing that you just like to do at times like that when you just want to lie on a couch and do nothing or just stream TV all day long. What are the things that you force yourself to do that you know will get you back on track? I'd love to hear them. Stick them in the comments below. I hope this video has been useful to you. I really appreciate all the positive comments and support I've had from all of you folks while I've been away for the last six weeks. It's great to be back. Looking forward to creating more content. Good luck.